were directly in front of Brown's vehicle, and Deputy Morgan approached last and positioned himself between Deputy Bishop and Sergeant Meads. Brown was holding his phone when law enforcement approached. He's good. Back up. Back up. All right. Brown threw the phone down and began to rapidly back his car away from the officers. You taking it out? Am I am I completely offline at this point? This is the American Dupus show. Don't be a Dupus. You need to back up to about five slides. You'll leave it right there. You're currently seeing still shots, clips taken from body cam footage. The body cam footage will be shown shortly. This is from the Andrew Brown Jr. killing presented by the prosecutor in charge with leveling charges against the police officers. No charges will be filed. Again, body cam footage coming shortly. Threw the phone down and began to rapidly back his car away from the officers. Deputy Lunsford's hand was still on the driver's door handle as Brown's car reversed and the handle was snatched out of his hand. At this moment, Deputy Lunsford yelled out and Deputy Lunsford was pulled over the hood of Brown's vehicle where his body and his safety equipment were struck by the vehicle. Deputy Lunsford's left arm was squarely on the hood. Deputy Lunsford took evasive action to get out of the way of the front left tire of Brown's vehicle and law enforcement commands became more heated with profanities shouted for Brown to stop the car. Brown ignored the officer's commands and backed his car until he was blocked by the rear of his residence. Continue. Continue. Right there. Brown then put the car in drive and turned the steering wheel left directly at law enforcement officers who had now surrounded his vehicle. Despite this tense situation and the aggressive driving by Mr. Brown, no law enforcement officer fired a shot. As Brown's car starts forward, Deputy Lunsford was now positioned directly in front of the vehicle and all officers were shouting commands to stop. Brown ignored the commands and drove directly at Deputy Lunsford. Deputy Lunsford used his left hand to push off of the hood. It was at this moment that the first shot is fired. Deputy Lunsford then spun out of the way to avoid being run over by Brown's vehicle. According to the North Carolina Justice Academy Forensic Analyst Case in Realms, the first shot was fired by Sergeant Means and it entered the front windshield of Mr. Brown's car. Let me say that again. It entered the front windshield of Mr. Brown's car. 
Brown's car continued forward, passing Deputy Lunsford, Deputy Morgan, and Sergeant Meads, and several shots are heard. One shot entered the passenger window and struck Brown in the shoulder. Several more entered the rear passenger side door and window. Brown's vehicle then accelerated across the vacant lot next to 421 Perry Street and five additional shots entered the rear windshield and trunk of Brown's vehicle. At this moment, Brown was driving directly at Investigator Johnson, who was positioned on Roanoke Avenue in an unmarked white van. Lieutenant Judd was positioned on the corner of Roanoke and Perry in an unmarked white Crown Victoria. Brown's car narrowly missed striking van operated by Investigator Johnson, who accelerated to avoid the collision. Brown's vehicle crossed Roanoke Avenue and struck a tree in the residence on Roanoke Avenue and came to rest. The Pasquotain County team gave chase, removed Brown from the driver's seat, and life saving efforts were immediately begun. At 8.24, deputies notified dispatch of shots fired. Emergency medical services were requested at 8.26 a.m. Lieutenant Judd was the supervising officer. He was on the scene at the time of the shooting. Other supervising officers of Pasquotain County Sheriff's Office arrived, including Chief Deputy Fogg, who collected the weapons and cell phones of the officers who fired. All of the following is clearly depicted on the body cameras that were operational and functioning properly on April 21, 2021. They were being worn by the aforementioned Pasquotain County Sheriff's officers. The total length of officer involvement with Mr. Brown from the time they exited the vehicle until Mr. Brown was removed from the vehicle is 44 seconds. I'm now gonna show you the four body cam videos that, did, that depict law enforcement activity with Mr. Brown on that day.
You've now seen the still pictures. You've heard them explained. You've seen the body cam footage. As always, this is not about how to think or what to think, just what to think about. It's the American Doofus Show. Don't be a doofus.